All set. Thank you. All right, we'll be ready to go. I'd like to call this meeting of the Jan January 11th Jamestown City Council work session to order. Would the clerk please call the roll? Council Member Sheldon? Here. James? Here. Karuba? Here. Olson? Here. Nelson? Here. Eckland? Here. Graham Reinhart? Here. Russell? Here. And President Dulce? Here. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask the clerk, is there any correspondence or letters? We did not receive anything. Thank you. All right. If there's no correspondence, we'll move on to our <clears throat> report from our standing committees. And our first committee is our finance committee and the chair of the committee, Councilwoman Eklund. Thank you, Mr. President. I have a resolution authorizing Deputy Fire Chief Matthew Kuhn to attend the New York State Office of Fire Prevention and Control Fire Officer 2 and Fire Officer 3 courses as conducted by the New York State Academy of Fire Science located at 600 College Avenue, Montour Falls, New York, 14865, beginning January 18th, 2021, and concluding February 19th, 2021, with expenses paid pursuant to Section 77B of the General Municipal Law. Anybody have any questions or comments? I no? just, I had, a, I had a question on that. Is that, is this what would allow him to be the fire chief? Is that why he's being sent to this? Um, Matt, you want to answer that? Uh, Councilman Russell, yes, that is correct. Um, whether my title remains to be deputy chief or if we switch to a fire chief's position, the training requirements are the same. Um, after January 21st of eight, I'm sorry, December 21st of 18, they amended the law. So anybody that's the administrative head of your fire department has to receive this training in order, in order to be permanently appointed. Okay, thank you. And I, I will note that the cost on the background for this is not to exceed $623. Okay, the next resolution is a re resolution authorizing fire code inspector Robert H. Smith to attend the New York State Office of Fire Prevention and Control Fire and Life Safety Educator One course as conducted by the New York State Academy of Fire Science located at 600 College Avenue, Montour Falls, New York, 14865, beginning January 18th, 2021 and concluding January 22nd, 2021 with expenses paid pursuant to section 77B of general municipal law. So chief or deputy chief, are these on site or are these um, virtual? Uh, it's actually a combination of both. So um, if approved, both Rob Smith, the fire code inspector and myself will be traveling out to Montour Falls. So it will be a residential thing. There is some classroom portion of it but there is a portion of it that's mobile as well that we will perform while we're there. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, the third resolution is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with the Jamestown Urban Renewal Agency for the 2021 fiscal year subject to the approval of the Corporation Council as to form. Again, this is a yearly resolution we have with this Jura. Okay, next resolution is authorizing the mayor to submit the 2020 through 2024 consolidated plan and the draft fiscal year 2020 annual action plan, including the specific CDBG and home activities contained therein to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Crystal, do you have anything you want to add to that? Um, the only thing I'll add is that this is the same consolidated plan and annual action plans um, that have been available uh, since November 20th. Um, if anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to, to contact me. We will have a final public hearing on January 25th 
Um, that announcement will be released uh, in the next day. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately it was delayed, but um, we're looking forward to getting it submitted finally. Thank you. And the fifth and final resolution out of finance is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Passport Labs Incorporated located at 128 South Tyron Street, number 2200, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28202, for the purposes of providing parking enforcement services, advanced collection services, and a mobile payment solution for the period of January 1, 2021 through December 31st, 2023, subject to the approval as to form by the Corporation Council. Was was there an RFP for this or was this just sent out? Yes, Council Macklin, there was a, there was an RFP. Okay. Um, I didn't see the backup in here for the RFP or for the opening of it. Can, were there other people who bid or was it just them? Yes, there was two other uh, companies that bid. Um, okay. Councilwoman Eklund, there should be a spreadsheet of each of the bidders and the uh, additional components to each of their bids. I didn't see it in my packet and I looked three times, but that doesn't mean that I'll look in my email. Maybe it just it. didn't copy. On the back side, just be. Yeah, I know. There's a couple back sides I had that were blank. So I'm wondering if something happened. Okay, I have it. Okay, thank you. If you want, I can try to, I can send it to you if you didn't get it. No, I'll look and if I don't have it, I know where to get it. Thank you. That's it from finance. I do believe we have one claim for executive session under finance as well. Correct. And I'm hoping, is uh, Corporation Council coming? Uh, he should be. I think he's running a bit late. I'll give him a call just to double check. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Not, I have a copy of the claim as well to provide for you. Okay. All. Okay. That's it for finance. We'll move on to public safety and Councilman Sheldon. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have three resolutions. The first two also appeared in the finance committee authorizing Deputy Fire Chief Matt Kuhn to attend the fire officer two and fire officer three courses in Montour Falls and Second resolution was authorizing fire code inspector Robert H. Smith to attend uh, the fire and life safety educator courses in Montour Falls as well. Uh, third resolution we have is authorizing the mayor to update the city of Jamestown vehicle policy, adding the language that any use or possession of any form of drugs and or alcohol in any city owned vehicle is grounds for disciplinary action up to and including termination subject to form or uh, approval as to form by the Corporation Council. Okay. Any questions on that or discussion? In term, yeah, I do actually. In terms of, you know, we have the drug collection boxes. I'm assuming that's excluded from when they transport any of the items from the drug collection boxes when the city, does the city police department actually transport those to a collection facility from the drop boxes or where do they go? Chief Jackson, can I answer that? The drugs that are in our drug box and reception are taken to WCA hospital be, to be disposed of okay. once it gets oh. full. Right. And I'm assuming then this would exclude that. I'm assuming that this policy, because as I thought about that in terms of transport, I would assume that excludes the transport of the drugs by the police. That's a good point. I, well, that right now it doesn't say that, but I'm looking at this going, I would hope it would ex exempt the police officers transporting those from the city collection boxes. Yeah. The Elliot. Corporation Council just arrived, so maybe you can answer that. Elliot, um, yes. I mean, the police department transports drugs quite frequently on calls that they confiscate and everything else, and it's never been an issue. Um, so, but I don't know if that should be laid out separately. Um, we can do that. Might want to consider it just to be on the safe side. Yes. 
We, we can add in a, a provision uh, with an exception for law enforcement purposes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think that would be a good idea. Guys, respectfully, can we include the fire vehicles in that also? We do carry drugs in the ambulance as well as transport other people's prescription medication when we transport them. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I didn't know that, but I just, I know about it because I have used the collection boxes to dispose of medications. And I thought, I never really thought about, I, I know that there are some that have been transported to other sites, but I'm glad to hear it's local that you can dispose of them that way. But I, I never thought about the fire department, so I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. Thank you. I, I had a question on this. Um, is there language uh, somewhere that states if someone has a prescription for medication from their doctor and they have it on their person, that they are exempt from this if they're a, in a city uh, vehicle? We're happy to take a look into that, uh, Councilmember Russell, and give you an answer. There's not a specific thing. Typically, if someone has a prescribed medication, uh, you know that's something that uh, they're allowed to carry on them because it's prescribed to them, um, specifically with a pharmaceutical. Uh, but well, we will take a look into it and uh, get back to you on that. Thank you, sir. Mayor and Elliot, maybe. Um just I know we just updated our policies through my employer and maybe it will be that the medication has to be carried in its original bottle with a script with their name on it something to that effect okay thank you we'll, we'll pull yep. some other city policies that have uh, some similar language and uh, see what we find yeah and I know we did have an issue uh, I think it was in 2019 complaint about an employee and there wasn't too much that could have been done at that point because it wasn't in the policy but uh, it will be now so I think that's this is a good thing but it, it probably could be tweaked a little bit yeah, thank you okay um, <clears throat> for informational reports uh, we have a tour rate card for midnight towing this does require a motion and a vote from public the public safety committee I have a motion to approve moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That has passed. And finally, uh, we have some changes to the city of Jamestown management guidelines. Um, there will be some changes to salary ranges in addition of specialized leave. Uh, Mayor, would you like to address this? Uh, sure thing, Councilmember Sheldon. Uh, so we put on here for an informational for you all um, to seek any additional feedback, uh, updates to the city management guidelines. Uh, some of them include uh, uh, position name changes, um, things like changing from secretary to admin administrative assistant, um, some updates to the language. Uh, in addition, we made and added in some uh, specialized leave to conform with New York state law. Um, part of it is also includes some paternity leave as well as uh, the mater paternal as well as maternal leave. Um, and we've updated some of the salary schedules. I know one of those in particular, the police chief public safety uh, operates typically under a, under a base salary plus a, a stipend. Um, we combined those uh, together and created a range instead of a step schedule, as well as the same for the deputy fire chief a range instead of a step schedule. Um, again, this is for informational purposes to solicit any feedback uh, you all have. We gave you the redlined version. Uh, and if you do have any, uh, please let us know so that we can make appropriate changes and then resubmit to you all. Mr. Mayor, I uh, kind of have a question and a comment. I was wondering if you could look into something for me. In the general orders and rules and regulations at the police department, there's language in there for... Um, a female officer that is um, pregnant, they list that officer as being um, as an off the job injury is the language that was used. And I was just wondering if you can look at maybe the legality of that type of language, um, considering pregnancy and off the job injury. 
We'll take a look into it, Councilman Russell. We appreciate you raising that. I have one, one question. Um, the governor has been talking about adding an additional state holiday of Juneteenth. If that becomes the case that it is passed and becomes a state holiday, would that then be um, included on the list of holidays or is that negotiated or how is that de list determined under section 10 for holidays? So if it's a state holiday, it is not automatically uh, created in our management guidelines. Uh, we would have to create that for the unions. It would be done uh, through negotiation to add those holidays. However, if the council so wishes, we could add uh, Juneteenth as a holiday. I believe it already has passed and signed the governor's desk to make Juneteenth a holiday. Uh, so if that is something that you are all interested in adding the holiday in, we're happy to take a look at that. I would like for it to be looked at and added. Thank you, Vicki. I thought you would have brought it up, but I said I, I wasn't sure that it actually Thank been you. signed yet, but I'm going since I thought most places followed, you know, the banks follow the state holidays and I, I just didn't right. think that would be under consideration if it did pass and become a state holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Marie. Yes. Anything else? All right, that does it for public oh. safety tonight. What? Sorry. Well, I was going to have a Kristen for Crystal, but um, or Eddie or somebody, but um, that can wait before we adjourn. Before you, you move over to public safety, I, um, uh, Mr. Uh, President, I just like to thank the uh, public safety committee and um, their stakeholder meetings. I think everything, all those went. I think they had the last one was uh, Thursday night. I think they were all very good. With some great information uh, gathered. Uh, community input was was great. It was out. There was a few themes in a, in a few of them. And uh, Chief Jackson, to know that um, a lot of people are thinking on the same line of thought that you are on. And so I think we're on a, a, a good. Um, we're on a good. We're in a good place. The city is, as uh, far as the executive order from the. Uh, governor, so uh, good job to the Public Safety Committee in handling those stakeholder meetings and allowing um, the community to really get involved if, if they didn't fit into a, a, a peg. <laughs> so there were other things offered for them, so, so good job. So I think I got cut off last week. <laughs> I think I froze. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, say old houses when you start the microwave and have a heater on there's a problem um so what i wanted to <laughs> say is um hopefully this week um we'll re reach out um to the mayor and the public or i'm i'm kind of percolating on some things reach out to the mayor and the public safety committee to about to talk about next steps and uh or maybe just share it with the whole council um to see where we go from here we, we have to kind of synthesize all of that information and start to kind of uh, put some together some sort of um, plan with some stakeholder um, input or um, feedback from the from the community, and it has to be out there for 30 days. So those are all things we need to think of. Uh, so I'm I'm kind of bouncing around some things, and I'll send those out for some feedback and some ideas, and then we'll we'll go from there. Yeah, also, a good thing about those stakeholder um, group meetings where. Some of them sounded like they really wanted to meet on a regular basis and to get some things done. So that was nice to hear that the mm -hmm. community wanted to work on some of these issues and they didn't want it to be just an hour meeting. They wanted to make sure uh, some of the thoughts were um, implemented. I also got the feeling that it wasn't just a law enforcement conversation either. Um, there were several um, people that brought up things about mental health that isn't necessarily within, I mean, law enforcement deals with that from the law enforcement perspective, but there were several other conversations in some of those stakeholder meetings that might warrant larger conversations due to the fact that there are so many different factors that play into why law enforcement is needed for some things that, that may be things that we can um, begin to tackle from different segments of the community. So I would agree, Vicki, that there are people who had some other ideas that may not necessarily fall into the police department, but are certainly things we should probably be talking about at a city level. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and one of the things that we, we need to do better for our city is the communication, because uh, there's a lot of things that we're doing and the community doesn't know. And so there's a lot of assumptions because they just there's just a, a lack of communication on our part. And, you know, we, we were saying at the last one, um, I think sometimes we get into our, you know, we, we get into our little our rhythm here and, you know, we know what's going on, but sometimes the community doesn't know. And so um, if we can just communicate, and I know a lot of departments, you, you know, you're out there, you're doing things. And, but I think we have to use every avenue of out there uh, for media sources and uh, repetition is good, you know, cause sometimes people miss things and, you know, uh, I'm a ch clerk at the church, you know, at the church and I do announcements and I know something that happened at the church and it's been announced and they'll say, I didn't know that happened, but we you know, we just have to keep, you know, we just have to keep on and, um, you know, get that information out there and we have to do it over and over and over. Let's do it over and over and over. And um, and I think the community is really uh, ready to roll up their sleeves and work next door, next to us and get these things done. They were good conversations. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to thank the members of the community who, who stepped up and volunteered to be part of this discussion. The members of the Public Safety Committee, Councilman Russell and Councilman Graham Reinhardt, and Councilwoman James, who was like a fourth member of our public safety committee there and all the work that she put into it, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would agree. The one meeting that I was able to attend, I was really impressed with the people that participated and that they were so open and willing to share some very personal information to try to help everybody understand that you know, sometimes we make mistakes when we're young, but as we mature, we, we hopefully don't make the same mistakes. And um, I think in some cases they felt that, you know, in a small community, sometimes that past doesn't never, you never seem to be able to escape it. And I think I, I really did appreciate the sentiment of the people um, and how hard they were trying and trying to make sure that their children had a better chance and that we're hoping that what their experience in the community wasn't the same thing that their children were going to have to deal with. So I, I thought it was very good. And I, I was impressed with the um, with uh, the way it was handled and the way it was run. I, I wish I could have been on it longer, but I had a back-to-back -back Zoom meeting. Um, but thank you. I, I do agree with everything everyone has said. Thank you. Thank you. Director of Public Safety? Yes. Uh, there are no committee reports for housing or public works tonight. President Dolts? Yes. I, there wasn't anything on the agenda, but I, I did want to mention something for, uh, I guess it's for public works. I did, I received a, a request um, from a, a Mary Beth Johnson who lives on Third Street. Um, I'm guessing many of you may know her and her husband, Chip. Um, and she wondered why uh, we couldn't put American flags on the, uh, on the Third Street Bridge. Um, and uh, she wanted me to look into that. Jeff uh, Lehman and I talked about it earlier. And uh, I think there are, there are already our um, flag holders, 11 of them on the bridge. And um, she thought that might look nice. Uh, so I just wanted to bring it up that we should look Councilman into it. Nelson yes. she has a she has addressed this with me in the past and Jeff uh -huh. I have Dan has put them up and we have put them up um there's an issue and Jeff you can correct me if I'm wrong that they get a lot of wind and get ripped off as a matter of fact um I had someone stop and pick one up because it was laying in the road a couple times and call me and we got it to Dan. So this has been done and I know Dan has addressed it and Jeff can probably address it a little more, um, but they just don't leave them up there all the time. Okay, well, she made a, a generous offer to even pay for them. And uh, I you know, just wanted to, to bring that forth. Um. I have a question for either the mayor or the Department of Development type things. Um, and this may be something you've already addressed, but the, earlier in the week, the mayor sent out some, just some links and some updates about the new stimulus um, information. And so I'm just wondering um, 
with regard to like some of the small business loans or some of the rental assistance for Jamestown residents or anything, you know, some people may have heard about it, but um, would the agencies be connecting with them? What do they come to the city for, Crystal? Is there anything that we can kind of like say really quickly for people to know where they can, what the city can provide them if they need anything? Or is, would, have you already done that? Or some people just might not know. Yeah, so we've been getting kind of updates um, over the, the last week or so since the stimulus was approved. Um, we, as we get them, we will send them out um, to uh, grant applicants um, that whether they received city grant funding or not, um, we'll send it kind of to our contact list um, through email. And then we typically will put um, together like a, a social media posting um, and we'll, we'll post it on our, our Facebook page. Um, we do that periodically. Actually, I was talking to um, my staff earlier today about putting something that's comprehensive together of all of the new information um, and just blast it out to everybody that we can. We do also have links on our um, Department of Development page as well as the Restart Jamestown um, page of the city website. There's links to um, you know, things like the PPP and all of the different uh, grant and loan programs that have kind of continued to be updated since the beginning um, of the pandemic. So just, um, the, you know, I've talked to a couple of people who felt like they weren't eligible the first time. So should they look again? They may, they may be eligible this Absolutely. time. Okay. Yep, Thank absolutely. you. Thank you. Council member Reinhardt, just to add on to that, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, second round of PPP loans uh, have opened as of today. Uh, so individuals or, or businesses should go through their banking institution. Uh, not all banking institutions open up today uh, in, for that loan. So depending on what type of bank you use, uh, some open up today, some open up in a couple days. Uh, and so uh, those individuals should go directly to their bank to talk about the PPP loans. In addition, there's several other grant programs that are coming. Uh, so things like uh, there was a Save Our Stages Act that was included in the stimulus for shuttered mm -hmm. um, venues, museums, uh, other institutions, cultural institutions. Most of those we've let know that that is available for them uh, and then that will be opening soon. Uh, and there will be some rental assistance coming from the federal government still to be determined. Uh, many of the agencies have yet to create the program or the application uh, to apply. So unfortunately, the only way we can do this is we just keep checking those websites to see when applications uh, are coming out. If folks have called either my office or Crystal's office. Uh, we are letting those folks know once we see those applications uh, come in. So definitely reach out to Crystal or I uh, if folks are interested, we're happy to connect you. We're, we'll put you on the list as soon as we see the app applications uh, come through. And the other one that I just sent to Crystal today and we'll send to you all is there is now a grant uh, through the state to provide uh, funding for shuttered restaurants as well, um, up to five grand per restaurant. So we'll be sending that out to restaurant owners and putting that up as well. So that's a pretty big one since restaurants have been very hard hit uh, during this pandemic. Thank you. Did you see I just lost power again? Isn't this great? <laughs> we, we had that problem once before. I think Crystal and I. And oh my gosh, I got to kick and... everybody out of the house when I have council meetings. This is crazy. Okay, <laughs> thank you though. Thank you very much. Very good. Uh, there's nothing else for new business. Uh, we'll move on to the mayor's report. Sounds good. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, just a, a couple things, actually, what we would like to start to do for the next couple work sessions is uh, my mayor's report is going to be taken over by some of our departments. Uh, we had what we called Achievement Day, uh, which we as a um, departments all got together virtually uh, to talk about all of the achievements that we have accomplished uh, for 2020 and set goals uh, for 2021. Uh, so today, uh, I'd like to have our Department of Development, our Corporation Council slash HR, and our clerk's office 
uh, present to you all kind of their achievements for 2020 and a small roadmap of where they're going for 2021. Shouldn't take too long, we'll break up the departments. Uh, we toyed with the idea of having all of the departments present tonight, uh, but then I thought you probably all get angry with me for going that late. So we, uh, we split them up for a couple work sessions. Um, so with that, I'm gonna have Zach share his screen and um, we're gonna go ahead and have our first uh, department uh, with Crystal and Department of Development, just talk a little bit about what they've accomplished uh, throughout the year and what they're looking at uh, for next year. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so uh, the mayor, as he mentioned, asked us to put together um, kind of our top three accomplishments for the year. So, um, you know, this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch, um, but you know, in thinking about that, I think that uh, the thing that stands out the most um, for our department is our coronavirus response um, and the different initiatives that we uh, kind of carried out uh, with, with that um, CARES Act funding um, and all of the different, different sort of things that happened, um, you know, in, in response to uh, COVID. So, the first thing was um, deploying our CARES Act funds. Um, we essentially had to develop three action plans um, so that we could deploy uh, CARES Act funds into the community as quickly as possible. Um, those action plans are very much like the ac annual action plans that we do every year. Um, so, you know, the amount of time and effort that my staff put in um, was, you know, was and continues to be an incre incredible amount of time and effort. Um, and I'm really proud of the way that we uh, were able to turn around um, these CARES Act funds as quickly as we did. Um, to date, after round two of uh, CARES Act funding, we have um, awarded 685,700 to uh, small businesses. Uh, 71,300 to residential rental assistance. And we're in the process of awarding um, up to 100,000 toward uh, residential utility assistance. Um, in addition to uh, implementing uh, the, the programs through the CARES Act, we also developed a webinar series um, to assist our businesses as they began to reopen um, following along the state's guidelines for reopening. So if you recall, you know, the phases and the way the state, um, you know, decided to, to reopen businesses through the phases. So um, the webinar series uh, addressed every type of business through every type of phase. And those are, I believe, still available on the city's website. And then we also implemented what we call the Restart Jamestown Initiative. Um, we put together a sort of a pledge um, program. There's a website. We developed a, a, a really simple website um, and a, a pledge program, which would um, basically give businesses an opportunity to sort of publicly pledge their commitment to ensuring the safety um, and health and well-being of their customers and their employees. So by taking this pledge, um, participants get a little sticker that they can display in their window or on their door um, near their register. And basically it's, it's uh, a public commitment or show of commitment that um, those establishments are, are um, really committed to ensuring that safety. Um, and, you know, the hope is that it kind of gives uh, their, their consumers some, um, you know, just a little bit of, of uh, assurance, I guess. Um, Zach, you can flip to the next slide, please. Uh, okay, so number two, um, <clears throat> our five-year consolidated and annual action plans. 
Um, these have been a, a big one on our list, as you probably all are aware. Uh, with those, the five-year consolidated plan is really the strategic plan um, for our department for the next five years. So um, with HUD being the, the most significant amount of funding uh, that we receive each year, um, really putting together that five-year strategic plan is, is the most, one of the most important things that we do. Um, and this is my first time so I've learned a lot. Uh, my team has learned a lot. And we, we really dove into it um, early on uh, prior to the pandemic um, with uh, high hopes of tackling it early, getting it done. And um, obviously uh, our COVID response took, took priority, but um, we're really confident that we have a plan and, and we're excited to submit it to HUD we worked really closely with our HUD reps in uh, the Buffalo office. And um, as a, a result of the five-year plan, we have our first annual action plan, which will be submitted along with that. And then our citizen participation plan, which will be um, hopefully approved at the end of this month. And that will guide us on our citizen participation over the course of the next uh, five years or until it's needed to be updated again. Next slide. Um, so something else that uh, we're, we're excited about, um, CARTS, as you know, has operated out of the gas station across the street from City Hall for the past couple of years. Um, it has worked out to be a really great location for them um, at this end of town or at the west end of town, um, kind of, uh, anchoring that side of downtown, if you will. Uh, it's worked out to be a great, great spot for um, proximity to services, to city hall, to, uh, you know, restaurants and, and businesses. So um, <clears throat> we, we've kind of worked with carts uh, throughout the year. Um, they were in need of identifying a permanent location uh, the owner of the, the gas station um, had uh, decided he wanted to sell the property. It went up for sale. We saw an opportunity there. We worked with CARTS to um, come up with a, a plan for the building um, where we'll, we'll work to partner with them through Jura. Um, we also uh, have committed to some CDBG funds for um, some remediation, which will be needed at the site, essentially just removal of gas tanks. Um, and uh, we're, we're really excited about this. We think that there's a great opportunity here. Uh, we'll also be working with the JRC to develop um, the building itself as a uh, small business incubator space or a co-working space. So that's kind of in development right now. Um, and uh, we think that this will be a really great addition to, uh, to Third Street. And, and CARTS has a, a permanent home, um, which has been needed for a very long time. Next slide. Um, so priority goals for 2021. Uh, we were asked to, to give three. <laughs> uh, I had a really hard time um, prioritizing just three. So um, quickly, we need to hire a new code enforcement officer. Um, we've got uh, Todd Peterson who will be retiring in July. So we'll be uh, looking to post that towards the end of this month and hopefully um, get someone in so they can train with Todd for a couple of months before he leaves us. Um, implementing the five-year consolidated and annual action plans. Um, it's really important to us that we, we not only submit a good plan, but we're able to implement those plans um, and, and execute them well. Um, we have a number of economic development projects that were delayed due to COVID. So working to identify where those projects are and get them back on track is a, a very big priority for us. Um, continuing to develop and establish standard operating procedures for all of our programs um, we, we've recognized that we have uh, 
we can be more efficient and we can do things a little bit better. Um, so we're working to streamline our processes and our procedures. Um, coordinate with uh, the Department of Transportation. Um, as you're probably all aware, Washington Street, uh, there will be a reconstruction project um, for Washington Street. So we want to make sure that we're coordinating with DOT and that that reconstruction project um, is ensuring our, our complete streets policy and we're addressing pedestrian safety and walkability throughout that corridor. Um, successfully implementing our uh, 19A and zombie initiatives. Um, I cannot see. Hang on. There we go. Um, complete Jura and city owned property inventory and develop marketing and redevelopment strategy for those parcels. And then um, hiring a planning and research assistant to fill a position that's been open since um, early in 2018. So, and I'm happy to elaborate on any of those if anyone has any questions. Awesome. Thank you, Crystal. So we'd like to talk, have our Corporation Council talk a little bit about his accomplishments and goals along with HR. You're on mute, Elliot. My apologies for that. I know we touched heavily on this last week, Council, but going forward, we do have some uh, things that I'd like to share with you today. Uh, the first is since I came on board last year with the mayor, we do not have any pending grievances uh, with any of our unions at the moment. Uh, which I take as an accomplishment. We've been able to work through most of those with the departments and we have not had the need to pay for an arbitrator for anything that's happened this year. As far as any grievances that did go through arbitration or were about to go to arbitration, we did resolve those matters as well. Uh, we do have some lingering civil court cases, but after the recent police uh, decision, we do not have any union type litigation. Uh, in addition, we did cover quite a few assessment cases as well this year. Uh, going forward, what are we trying to do in the coming year is we have implemented Clio as a new case management software. So coming into the office, I was fortunate in the fact that I had some really good corporation counsels before me. But one of the things that we hadn't really done here in Jamestown was uh, digitize many of our records and digitize uh, new cases coming in so that you know, one day when I'm not here, someone just pull up that case based upon the type of case it is, as well as the parties involved, and look those things up. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're still using the old paper system, so we're getting away from that by digitizing those documents and then filing our cases into the Clio case management system, which is a cloud storage. Uh, in addition to that, that's also helped with the fact that through the pandemic, New York State courts have gone to a digital format for hearings as well as filings as well. So going forward, what did we, what did we see this year that was an accomplishment that you know, we can talk about right now since the public already knows it is we did settle the CSEA contract, uh, one of our union contracts. And uh, that was a contract that was two years behind. So we have that done now. Now into 2021, we have every union contract at the end of 2021 does expire. Uh, that will be difficult negotiations with the city and state's financial picture, but I'm sure that we can communicate with the unions and hopefully work towards some sort of resolution. Uh, looking forward, what are we trying to do as far as, you know, the electronic system, the cases, as well as what do we do? We wanna show what we do to council, what we do to the public, as far as you know, what are we spending our time doing? So we are tracking with our case management software, uh, the time frame spent on each individual case and each individual matter that we'll be able to present to the council 
next year if the council so desires that type of detail. Also, we'd like to show you, you know, with what all that time is spent, what the results are. So one of the things that we did have is uh, prior in my office, we had uh, Ms. Tabor, who is our legal secretary. Uh, in the mid 2000s, the city had sent her back for paralegal training and for more HR related functions. So she has taken on some of those HR duties specifically with insurance. And after speaking with her this year, she will be being brought on to labor negotiations uh, to assist the corporation council. Great, any questions for Elliot? Thank you, Elliot, we appreciate it. So the last one we have is uh, clerk slash treasurer. Uh, Jen, do you wanna tell us uh, how 2020 went for you? Sure, thank you. Um, so this year we worked um, with the mayor and the comptroller's offices to get our online um, taxes up and running, um, which has been a really big success so far. Um, we've had 99 transactions processed online currently um, as of close of business yesterday. So 11 p.m. last night is when that reporting ended. Um, what we learned in 2020 was that not only did we always wanna provide this as a convenience for people, um, but it really became a necessity. And it was obvious that we needed to have another option for people to be able to pay their bills. Um, you know, with the windows not being open, um, it just, it really kind of um, hit home that it was something that we needed to do and um, it's, it, it's working really well. Um, so that's been, so that's been wonderful. Back, you can go to the next. Um, so, you know, we're not, not known for um, big, projects in the clerk treasurer's office. Um, we're kind of the day-to-day the -day functions of the city and providing services to, to the people that need them. Um, with all of that said, you know, we were, we were able to still be here for the public even though those windows were closed. Um, some days it was just myself. Um, some days I had a partner in there with me. Um, as, as we inched closer and closer to reopening, we were able to bring people back, you know, little by little. Um, we were able to process, you know, our tax payments, BPU payments, um, vital record requests. We issued um, just shy, I want to say 23 marriage licenses via Zoom, which was a totally um, new experience for, for all of us. Um, when we had folks working from home, they were working on our meeting minutes as well as um, transcribing the meeting minutes for the Village of Sherman to bring in a little extra revenue. Um, and also keep, keep our people working while they were at home, which, which was great. Um, we were able to onboard a new member of the staff on a part-time basis. Um, I really wanted to be sure that when the doors and windows opened again and that we were all ready for the public. Um, so, that, so that was a big success for last year. Zach, you can switch, thank you. Um, with the help of the Parks Department, um, our animal control officer, and the County Health Department, um, we were able to put on our annual free rabies clinic, as you all know. Um, it was new and reimagined and, um, it, you know, luckily worked out really well. Um, we vaccinated approximately 165 animals um, that otherwise most likely would not have. Um, and we were only one of four clinics in the county this year. Um, so our, our goals for 2020, we are, um, you know, really looking to uh, transition for, um, towards our online platform um, so people can, we can track our FOIL, we can um, put special event applications out there so that people can complete these things at their convenience and on their um, schedule. It's just, you know, it, when you're only there cert through certain hours of the day, you know, somebody at six o'clock should be able to submit a special event application and have it be received by us. Um, so that, so, and then um, another, um, toward the end of 2020, we made really great strides in record management here um, and disposing of, of some old records, which freed up a lot of um, really valuable space here in the building. 
Um, and that's, that's another goal for 2021. We wanna keep that momentum going um, and work on our records that are held offsite to dispose of what can be um, and to get a better, a better inventory of, of what's out there and what we need to hang on to. Um, and again, that will kind of open the door um, on the way to digitizing those records. Um, that's a long-term goal is to get those eventually digitized. Great. Any questions for Jen? I was just wondering, how long do we hold on to uh, records before you're allowed to dispose of them or remove them? It depends on what the record is. If it's something like an invoice, um, it's you know six years from the purchase date, I believe. Um, meeting minutes, that's a permanent retention. So that's something that we always have to hold on to. Like the final assessment role is a permanent retention. Um, it, it just kind of varies. It really depends on what the, what the item is. Um, we've been working with the new schedule that we um, implemented this month at the state Put out and requires us to use and that's that's worked out really well it's kind of helped make it easier to find those those timelines certain ones now we have memorized um, between debbie patty and myself so um but it, it's just a nice tool to have so we, we like to get rid of whatever whatever isn't necessary that we hang on to so thank you mm -hmm. great and just to add on to that council member james uh, while I was going with Jen and her crew to some of the records, we have uh, records from uh, Jamestown General Hospital that are on giant floppy disks. <laughs> we don't even have devices <laughs> to read anymore. Um, and we have rec paper record copies as well. So uh, being able to go through that was quite an accomplishment for Jen and her staff. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you uh, all so much for uh, for going through that. We'll have another couple departments at the next uh, work session, uh, but we wanted to show you that you know, despite the pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. these these department heads and all of our employees and our departments, as you all know, hustled real hard and uh, did a lot of really great achievements uh, and and helped to modernize the city uh, this year. We're excited to go into 2021. We'll keep going forward with that. Uh, and so I thank the ones that presented tonight uh, for being the first ones. Uh, next ones will be, uh, we'll let you know who the next ones are at the next work session. Uh, but uh, thank you for that. Um, just a couple more comments and then we'll have an executive session. Um, today, many of you may have seen the uh, governor issued the state of the state address. Uh, it was an overview today. There will be additional state of the state speeches happening uh, throughout the week. Uh, as we uh, go through those and review those and summarize them, we'll provide that uh, to the council as we did uh, last year. But be on the lookout. The governor's doing a, a bit of a speaking tour. Uh, and so you'll see several of his uh, topics being um, delved into a little bit more um, across the week. And uh, the last thing I'll have to let you know is that we will we are planning tentatively to do the state of the city uh, at the voting session at the end of the month. Uh, we will make a final decision on whether that will change or if we'll do something kind of pre-recorded instead uh, by the end of this week. So we'll let you all know, but tentatively uh, we plan for doing that state, a summary of the state of the city, as well as a written report for you all uh, at the uh, voting session at the end of the month. Thank you. Just one executive session item, uh, which is a claim one that I mentioned that one right that is correct yes all right uh do I have a motion to go Mr. Pre Mr. Uh, President if I can just make one quick announcement sure. regarding uh yes I just like to announce that the uh Emmanuel Baptist Church will be holding its 38th annual uh Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh program it will be virtual this year and I will send everyone uh, the link and if you are out there and you would like to look at it you can go to the Emmanuel Baptist uh, Church's Facebook page, and the event is posted on there. That where you can, uh, you know, hit the link and, and join us. We have um, uh, Reverend uh, Reginald Smith from Blackwell Chapel, Amy Zion Church. He will be delivering the message, and there will be a lot of uh, local artists who will also be performing. And if you haven't heard um, Pastor Reggie Smith 
speak. You are in for a treat. He's a fire. He's on fire. He's hot. He is. Um, he is a dyma- dynamic speaker. So we hope to see that. Uh, we hope that you all can um, attend. Just Thank want you. to point it out there, Vicky, that I'm going to send him a message tonight and said that you thought he was hot. So I just want to yeah. <laughs> make sure you complete the sentence. <laughs> He's we'll a very it. handsome young man. <laughs> Thanks, Vicki. Yes. Um, just want to uh, remind everybody next week is uh, the holiday on the 18th, so there'll be no meeting. Uh, so our next meeting will uh, be a voting session. will be on the 25th of the month, um, two weeks from tonight. So, uh, and as the mayor stated, um, we'll see, you know, whether or not, whether he's going to do the State of the Union that particular night or under a different format. We talked about it last week. So we'll be, we'll wait to see what what his pleasure is on that. So if there's no other business to come before the council, I would ask for, do we have um, for executive session or a claim? Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So So moved. So moved by Councilwoman James. I think uh, Marie Caruba seconded it. Uh, All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We'll give the mayor a minute here to, to uh, stop the recording and uh, we'll be in executive session. There'll be no action taken. <laughs>